Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. My name is John. Today I'm going to show you the latest update to Reaper version 515. This and the last couple updates were all mostly little bug fixes, things that are hard to demonstrate because uh, I don't like to have multiple versions at once and it's hard to do A-B comparisons. But I'm going to show you a few of the things that I found interesting in the latest version. And the first one is control surface support for Huey and the DM2000. So there has been partial Huey support for a long time, and that's not really changed. It's not 100% um, Aki Huey supported, but they have made a few changes. So if you have a Huey device, such as the DM2000 from Yamaha, you can now better integrate this with Reaper. So for example, with the DM2000, press the fader button that will toggle the views for mixer control panel and track control panel. Press the pan button to switch the pan or the faders onto the pans. You can press in one of the pan buttons to reset the pan for the track. And there's also a global offset um, for all Huey devices now. So if you have multiple Huey devices and you set an offset of one, uh, that means that the first track is not going to control your master. I don't have one of these consoles, so it's really hard to demonstrate this. But of course, this is good news for anyone that does have one of these. Another thing that has been updated is the Elastic uh, time searching. So uh, Elastic 3.1.4 Pro Efficient and Soloist. This is the latest version, and it should have better performance and lower memory use. There's a new preference for filtering plugins from the list. So if you go to this here, this is new. So it will automatically filter audio units and waves audio unit instruments from the list, from this effects list. I asked Justin about the reason for this. He said that was a request from waves. Waves would prefer that you use the VST or the VST3 versions. But you could also use this filter to remove uh, certain other companies that you don't want in the list, but maybe you need these plugins for other programs. Uh, but you can kind of permanently remove things from this browser list. So here's an interesting one. This is uh, extended range peaks for floating point files. So uh, I'm going to show you this two different ways. So I'm going to take this first one. Uh, actually, let's take them both. We'll raise up the volume by 20 dB. Super loud. Obviously, that's going to clip. Let's look in the project settings under media and choose our format. So I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to do the first one 24 bit. And I'm going to glue this. I'm going to take this one, set this to set this to 32 bit and glue that one. All right, so now uh, I'm going to take this one that's 24 bits and turn it down. You can see it's clipped. This one is a 32 bit wave file. I bring it down and the peaks, the original peaks, the original waveform is still there. So with a 24 bit uh, fixed point file, you're going to commit that clipping. And with a 32 bit floating point or 64 bit floating point file, you have an extended range and you can just pull down the file to um, remove the clips. Prior to this version, uh, even the 32-bit file would look like this until you ran a normalized action on it. That would update you, the, um, the peak file and give you the correct waveform. Another new preference is the this new path here, default path to save new projects. So we can set this up. I'm going to put it on my current projects folder. My current projects folder, hit open and apply. And now when I make a new project, it's, um, well, if simply if I hit save here, it's going to default to the current projects folder instead of going to the desktop or wherever the last project was saved. So that is a nice new addition. All right, so the next one is render do not adjust time selection with saving project along with normal renders. 
and store render tail lengths configuration per project and support the render queue. So uh, the first one was not adjusting the length of the time. So let's say you have a time selection of here. If I go to render and I use the tail in the last version after rendering this end marker would actually be 1000 milliseconds after. And also this tail option is now stored with the project that renders it rather than a global option. So uh, it makes more sense. It was just an oversight before. There is a new ripple editing mode and you can now right click this ripple editing button and you see there are three modes. Well, two modes plus you can optionally affect the tempo map. So if I put in a tempo marker here, so say 105 and one here, 100. All right, so ripple editing for all tracks is on. If I move this, that uh, tempo marker doesn't move. But if I turn this on and drag this, then my tempo marker moves as well. That's something that's very simple, but very helpful. In stretch marker mouse modifiers, right here, going to uh, for stretch marker rate, we now have the option to, to set this to no action. So, all right, so here's a couple stretch markers. When the cursor is like this, and I'll just zoom in here, the cursor is like this, going up and down, that will stretch. Right, that will um, change the slope, the rate of this section of audio. If I set this to no action, click apply, and I click on this, now it's not going to do anything. So the stretch marker rate, if that was not something that you wanted to use, you can now kind of disable that feature. And the last thing is a fix for VST factory preset compatibility with Waves. More improvements that uh, Waves and Kakos are collaborating on to make Waves plugins work correctly in Reaper. It's always nice to see the companies working together, and uh, it just helps everyone. Those are some of the highlights of what's new in Reaper 515. If you want to see all the other changes, you can click on the Help menu and Change Log for what's new. And in here, you'll see the entire list going all the way back to uh, version 5.0. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's helped. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more.